What's the weirdest thing that you've seen at someone's house that they thought was completely normal? I dated a guy whose family was just odd. They just did things so differently. Sometimes I wondered if they might be aliens. No one the house knew how to use a stove. They used the microwave or ate out. Every cabinet and drawer in the house was always wide open. Like they had no idea you could close them. The rest of the house was clean and organized. Which made it all the stranger. His mother walked around naked pretty much constantly and took about 10 baths a day. His parents would go to McDonald's to watch TV. Despite having a very nice TV with satellite, TiVo etc. His family had a lot of grandiose tales. Things like they saved two men from a plane crash and how the mother outran a pack of wolves in suburban Arizona. There is a lot more but these were what stuck out in my mind. Comma his mother walked around naked pretty much constantly and took about 10 baths a day. Granted, it's weird if you're not that person. But if you were naked 90% of the time and spent most of your day in a bath, you'd probably be one happy mother. Spent the night at a friend's house in 6th grade. He lived with just his mom. Dad wasn't in the picture and he was an only child. So they had a close relationship. We were having a great time until his mom called him for bath time with her, like, together. They even left the door open like it was nothing. No, she was not hot. They could have been polite and offered you a scrub down as well. Girl from my previous work invited some of us over for dinner. As it turns out, she had removed the toilet seating from her toilet because it doesn't look good enough with it on. You actually had to sit on the thin ceramic rim. Since people have said this isn't uncommon in certain countries, this took place in Germany where toilets always have seats. When I was 8 years old my friend told me she had Super Mario so of course we went to her house. Her parents thought it was okay to let her mentally handicapped older brother, probably around 15, wander around the house naked with a gigantic erection casually masturbating from room to room. The room with the Nintendo was just a mattress, no sheets, and the TV. So at one point he went into the other room and grabbed a chair, set it right down next to the TV facing us and went to town. Her mother walked into the room and let us know it was time for dinner, food stamp breakfast cereal, and the kid barely touched his food, just constant jerking off while they all ignored it like it was no big deal. Paramedic here. 102 liter soda bottles filled with urine because the toilet is broken. But where was he pooping where was he pooping? Thought it was obvious but apparently not. This was in a course of my job duties hence mentioning I'm a paramedic. Context. No yard. 3 story walk up apartment slash flop house. No work. The guy was very much unemployed and it took a police committal to get him to leave his apartment which was immediately condemned. There was also sadly a cat and animal control involved. Also bed bugs but those are a given. Sadly mental health issues can make the weirdest behavior seem normal. I had a friend who did this. He'd crap in a pizza box then take the box outside and put it in the bin for his building. It was a couple of months before he realized the pizza boxes had his name and flat number written on them. I had a friend named David and he invited me to his house once. Little did I know that his family were horrific hoarders. You couldn't see the floor of his house, and I was literally stepping in bowls filled with cereal. At one point, I saw a snake just slither through the refuse and immediately made up an excuse that I was sick so I could go home. What a nightmare. The snake bit makes it sound like the garbage compactor scene in Star Wars. I would have gotten out of there too before it pulled me underneath all the trash. My parents were in a bowling league and would bring me with them. I made friends with a girl who hung out at the bowling alley because she lived in a home on an acre next to it. She invited me to come to her house while my parents bowled. I asked my parents and they said I could. We walked to her house, and when I walk in there is a lion cub chained to a coffee table in the front room. She asks me if I want to pet the lion. Of course I do. I pet the lion. We hang out, and I go back to the bowling alley like nothing happened. I tell my parents and they are like sure you pet a lion. Years later when I am reading the paper, the girl and her family are arrested for illegally having exotic cats. I show my parents and have the best told you so moment in my life. TLDR. I went to someone's home and there were hundreds of pictures of themself and no one else everywhere. One of my wife's co-workers invited us to a dinner party. He's a very accomplished doctor who is, supposedly, 
considered the foremost authority in his specialty. I knew the man had a huge ego but nothing prepared me for what I saw when we went to his home. As soon as we walked in the door there was a life size painting of himself that one of his patients had given him as a gift. Nothing strange about that. He saved a patient's life and they were very grateful so they gave him a painting. His wife takes our jackets, hangs them up then walks us to his massive living room where the rest of the guests are mingling. As I looked around the room to take in what a magnificent home this man has I noticed that there are hundreds of pictures lining his shelves and walls. Every single one of those pictures was of him. Not of his wife, not of his four children, not of his siblings, parents, or someone he admires. Even the pictures that looked like they may have been group photos were cropped so that only he could be seen. I'm terrible at hiding my true feelings. My face usually gives me away every time but I spent the next hour desperately trying to pretend like this wasn't remotely strange. After a few drinks I decided to head to the bathroom. I had to take a dump and I'm not shy about doing so at another person's home. I walked into their guest bathroom, closed the door, lifted up the lid sat down and grabbed one of a dozen books that were sitting next to the toilet. The first book I picked up is written by our host, so I picked up another book and it is also written by our host. I looked at the book ends and all of them are written by our host. Part amused and part disgusted I looked up and noticed there is a picture on a small table across from the toilet. It's our host again, staring at me in the picture while I'm taking a dump. Because it was asked so often. No one mentioned the pictures to him also I'm 100% certain it wasn't a troll or a practical joke. That is either extreme dedication to a joke or really creepy. I like to believe it is dedication so I know there are other people out there who would go that far for a joke. I was visiting a friend one time and we were about to go buy a 30 rack at the nearby liquor store. I tell him we need to stop by an ATM so I can pick up some cash to pay. He just turns and looks at me and goes. Don't worry about it, we can just go to the money drawer. This kid's family literally kept a drawer full of $20 bills in the kitchen that you could just walk up to and grab whenever you needed something. It was pretty surreal. I need a money drawer. I have a change jar, but that doesn't seem like it compares to a money drawer. When I was in college I played the drums in a band and we would often practice at the guitar player's house because his parents didn't care about the noise. The family was weird and the house smelled, but the thing that got me was the filth. There was always dog shit somewhere and I don't think they ever flushed or cleaned a toilet. All of this was considered normal to them. Then one day the guy that played guitar walked over to the corner of the room and pee on the floor. I was stunned. He wasn't drunk or anything like that. This was normal to him. His parents didn't care either. It was just how they did things. I met this kid in third grade and he seemed normal, cool kid, funny, anyway. I go to his house to work on a school project and his mother was a hoarder. Worst of the worst, she could have a marathon of the hoarders in her own home. I guess the kid thought it was normal because he had been loving in it since he was born. He was kinda disheartened when he came to my house and didn't have to climb over mounds of trash to take a pee. A good high school friend's mom was a hoarder. We had to navigate narrow corridors through all the piled junk to get to his room. His tidy, spartan, immaculately clean room. Dog crap. Old, crusty, along with fresh and smelly pit bull crap. All over the living room. While he just sits and watch TV in the room. As if it wasn't even there. Yeah, this was my house. Yeah, this was my roommate. I'd pick it up. Let the dog out try to housebreak it. He did nothing. As I packed up my stuff to move out, I stopped picking up the dough, thinking he'd man up. Nope. I had to step around those massive landmines as I moved out. This is like, my third post to this thread. It has become clear to me that I know some pretty dysfunctional people. I'd say allowing somebody to allow their pet to crap on your floor constantly is pretty dysfunctional. Yeah, my direct response to a roommate's dog crapping on my floor was to bag it up and drop it in his lap. Your responsibilities are in my way. Clean up your dog's crap. Quick story. I grew up in an Irish Catholic family. My parents were constantly fighting. As soon as you would set foot inside our home, the tension would just wrap itself around you and squeeze you. One wrong move and all that tension would just explode. 
So for my brothers and sisters and me, we would do our best to avoid that basic family interaction so you weren't the one who would potentially cause the next tension explosion. Fast forward many years, so I was set to meet my now ex-girlfriend's family, great people, kind of your typical midwestern parents, extremely nice and amazing people, so anyways, I meet them and everything is great, her mother makes an amazing dinner and we feasted, afterwards we sat down upon the couch and we all just talked, no tv, no cell phones, no bickering, no fighting, no talking shabti about other family members. Even her nephews sat on the floor and listened to the stories being told by everyone. And then it hit me. That whole scene of us just sitting there with all systems normal. That moment was so strange to me. But it was really a life changing event for me. To know that families like that do exist. A weird experience for me. A great experience. I once looked at an apartment in Columbus. And when I went into the building manager's apartment to sign the lease, the walls of his entire living room were covered in machetes and severed mannequin breasts with hand-painted nipples. I immediately realized I had forgotten my wallet and driver's license in the car and beat a hasty retreat. I ended up renting a room in a house about a block away. About a year later, the guy was killed when a booby trap he had created with a live grenade blew up. Did a couple of tours in Iraq and went in hundreds of houses. Common thing was if they had a DVD player or some other kind if electronic device. They would always keep the styrofoam packing on the device. I don't know if they thought it was part of the DVD player or if it prevent dust from entering. Also saw a great number of what I call barn people. Pretty much kids that are too dysfunctional and mentally challenged to live with the rest of the family. So they keep them in the barn or shed. Pretty sad. Most likely that they were trying to keep it in good condition. Stuff like that is fairly common in parts of the world where things like DVD players are a big deal. They keep a sewing needle pin stuck into their hand towel. I found it by reaching to use the hand towel to dry my hands and putting the pin through my finger. I was like WTF guys and they just shrugged as in, you don't have sharp objects hiding in towels they then went on to explain that it was used for draining pimples. Kids in the home going to the fridge, grabbing a stick of butter, unwrapping it, taking a big bite, rewrapping and putting it back. My daughter eats butter, I can't keep it on the table because she'll find a way to get her hands all up in its business. It's freaking weird. My friend, Todd, and I were both 10 years old, I spent a lot of time at his house. But always had the feeling that things were just off in some way. I didn't know what his mom did for a living. But I did know she slept until 2pm daily. Todd told me that the overwhelming urine smell in the basement was from his cat. But I couldn't understand how one cat was capable of that stench. His mom and stepdad eventually were caught and did prison time for manufacturing crystal M. My ex-friend. His dog peed in the house so much parts of the floor was warped. He would stand on the first floor and pee down the basement stairs because going upstairs took too long. He didn't want to grab a garbage can so he grabbed a hammer and knocked a hole in the wall. Proceeded to stuff chicken bones inside of it. There is more but this is the worst. He lived with his dad. They have a giant painting of a spider on the wall. Creepy as heck. All of the bush trimming in their yard was done with katanas. They rarely mowed out of fear of hitting a kune or piece of broken blade. They had three neighbors next door to them in four years. I blame that when a machine stopped working they took it in the backyard and beat on it with sledger hammers and pipes. 3am their microwave broke once and the cops were called after they beat tea for an hour. They had an area rug in the middle of the living room. If there was flat pop in a can they poured it on the carpet and tossed the can in a bin for recycling. They didn't want to get the bin full of stale pop. All of the furniture was from street corners just because. He drug a futon home 3 miles to put in his room. Nothing wrong with reusing things but this futon was barely functional and covered in garbage. The sun showered once or every 2 weeks. He somehow had girlfriends, attractive and smart, all the time in high school and got laid daily. None of us could understand it since they too would go back to his place. He tossed sandwich parts he didn't want, tomatoes, onions, certain meats behind his TV dresser. He would leave the window open and told me it was so animals could get the food. Thought he was joking till I saw a squirrel running out with some bread he tore off. First time I went over to a friend house. I was walking into his room and he says, don't stand here, 
The carpet's crusty for 8 years he's been jacking it in the same spot, never washing it. This one is true, but really disgusting. When I was little I used to sleep over at my dad's house. He rented a room inside of a house owned by other people with only one bathroom for the family that owned the house and my dad. So instead of walking out to the bathroom he would pee inside of soda cans that he had finished earlier. I was not aware of this. So one night I was really thirsty in this dark room with everyone sleeping. I found a soda can that felt half full and just took a gulp out of it. It was cold from sitting around for a while but tasted really sour and just god awful. I had no choice but to swallow this huge mouthful of pee because I couldn't just spit it onto the bed. I still wasn't 100% sure what had happened until the next day I asked my dad did you take a pee in a soda can last night and he said while laughing there. Yeah. Why? Did you drink it while I was too embarrassed to tell him so I said no. I just smelt it and it smelt like pee and just went about my day. TL. DR. I drank a mouthful of my dad's old and cold pee. I will add in another about my dumb butt dad. My dad always had another nasty habit. He really liked pretzels, but instead of just eating the freaking things like a normal human, he would just lick the salt off of them. The worst part about this habit is that instead of throwing each pretzel out, he would just put them right back in the packaging. These are the rod pretzels, not the standard shaped ones. Still, to this day, I have no clue why he does this. So randomly, when I was little, I would go to eat some pretzels only to take a bite out of a soggy, saltless stick. So of course, I made a habit out of checking every pretzel to make sure none of the salt was missing before even touching it. Unfortunately for our visitors, they were unaware of this habit my dad had. So recently at my dad's house I see my aunt eating some pretzels she found sitting next to the couch. I didn't really think anything of it until she asks me why we buy unsalted pretzels. I guess my dad spit dried up on these pretzels making them seem like they weren't salted to begin with. I freaking gagged. TL. DR. Don't eat the pretzels if you ever come to my house. An old drug dealer had a couple thousand little green army men. Claimed that none of them were the same and that if they were, he had altered them in some way, cut off their hand, painted on tiny eyes, etc. He also only bought green light bulbs, drug dealer, so the entire thing was extremely creepy. Crap, literally. My wife and I responded to an ad for a kitten. When we got to the apartment it became a rescue to get the kitten out of there as soon as possible. There was one litter tray for about 10 cats to share but most had given up and resorted to crapping wherever they wanted. The kitten we took had a severe eye infection and was severely malnourished. We got in the car and called the RSPCA immediately. Thanks for the gold. Went to a party in college and the kid living there had boxes of cat fancy magazine catalogued by month and year all over his room. When I asked about it, the dude just shrugged and said, I'm into cats, I was too nervous to ask more. Once when I was a kid I was invited to stay over for dinner at a friend's house. My friend's mother poured a large quantity of ketchup into a cereal bowl, which the entire family all casually dipped their fingers into and licked throughout the meal. Maybe they didn't want you to ever come back over. This was when I was a kid. I was at my friend's house, and her mom got us some orange juice with our lunch. When we finished eating she took the remaining juice from the cups and poured it back into the container. Even as a kid I thought it was disgusting. The last glass of juice in that container would probably be mostly backwash. Just awful. My friend would let his dog lick his feet for at least 20 minutes at a time while people were over. The whole place would smell like dog saliva and feet. When things got quiet all you could hear was the slurping of the dog's tongue between his toes. The mother of a friend of mine is a little nuts. For years she went on about her cat that she loves. After not seeing the cat ever I finally asked the guy where the frick this cat was. He looked around and said, follow me. Uh, okay so we go downstairs into the basement, and he opens up the freezer. He says grab that, pointing to her plastic bag. Inside was fluffy for the last few years. The little bell around his neck still jingled when you turned the rock hard kitty over. The cat had died in the house, but the mother didn't want to bury it, or burn it, or throw it away. You get the idea. He couldn't say anything to his mother about it. So yeah, that was weird. 
I was invited over to a friend's house for dinner for the first time. Now, for staging purposes, they all sit around the living room to eat as a family. They have these two large dogs. So, I ask beforehand, as I always do, what the rules are with the dogs and food. Comma am I supposed to ignore begging? Can I give them a bite? What kind of stuff can I feed them? Do they have to do a trick to get some? They tell me that not only can I feed them whatever I want, but that all the plates are given to the dogs after the meal and that the dogs would hassle you if you took the plate straight to the kitchen. So, I finish my meal, which was decent, and I lay my plate down for the dogs. They clean it up quite nicely. I pick it up to take to the kitchen and I ask if it goes in the sink or the dishwasher. They said to put it back in the cabinet because the dogs clean it good enough to eat off of. I laughed at the joke and then kinda reiterated my question. It wasn't a joke. My friend walked into the kitchen and put her plate, her boyfriend's plate, and her mom and dad's plate all in the cabinet with the other clean dishes. I could have been sick. I dropped all contact with them. That was just too much. TL. DR. Their dishwashing was done exclusively by the dogs. I have a backwards version of this story. I grew up in South Texas and Missouri before moving to the Chicago area in high school. When I was in my 20s, my girlfriend invited me over to house to meet her parents. They were having a backyard barbecue party, and the typical summer fare was being served, including corn on the cob. Well, the stick of butter was on the plate right in front of me. So I did what I always had done. I took my corn cob and rolled it across the stick of butter. The look on her mom's face was priceless, albeit somewhat frightening at the time. And the hard pinch on my leg and the grim tone of my girlfriend's expression taught me that this was not normal behavior up here in these parts. But hey, they all got over it. Been married to that woman for 18 years now. In the top of one of my friend's pantry, I saw a coffee container. I wondered why a Folgers coffee container was up there and not with the other coffee containers in the kitchen. I opened it and saw like 20 dead scorpions. I wonder if they really hated scorpions, but were against the death penalty. I sentence you to life without the possibility of parole. Into the can with you. My brother dated a girl whose mother kept a pet tortoise in the bathroom. He had no idea until he went to use the bathroom and what he thought was a stone statue started walking towards him. Growing up, my one friend's family used box tissues for everything. Dinner napkins, paper towels, toilet paper, dish drying, everything. And they really weren't all that stressed on throwing them out right away. Everywhere you'd look there were these little piles of used tissues. I remember asking my friend about it. He told me that they left them lying around to dry out in case they needed to use them again. And also because the cat liked to play with them. Another family I knew licked the tops of all their condiments in order to keep them clean. I'd be over for dinner or something and the mom would squirt some mustard. Lick the top clean and pass it to her son. One time I was over while they were having steak. The dad practically gave that A1 bottle a rim job before passing it to me. I passed. A 6 year old boy carrying around a framed picture of Vanna White, kissing it and hugging it. He supposedly took it everywhere and slept with it too. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.